Right. Now, I was sitting back there, and somebody said it looked like it was going to be a boring time. I hope we won't be, but if you've got uh, your Bibles, please turn with me in your Bibles to James chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verse 17. Now, it's just one verse, and we know if, if we are a Bible reader what comes afterward, and what comes afterwards really does hit hard, and we'll get there when we get there. Uh, but for now, we're going to be looking just at this verse. And we find there that in your Bible that James tells us, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Let us pray. Dear Lord, most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you, I simply ask that you would be with us here tonight. Father, I ask that you would to open up this scripture to us, let us see it for what it is. Father, if it is something that will convict us here tonight, then Father, send that conviction. Father, if it's something that will encourage us here tonight, Father, give us that courage. Give us that faith. Give us those works. For it's in your name we ask and humbly pray. Amen. So as we look here, we find, just as uh, oh, uh, James has said, uh, we've read before where it says, What is it, profit of a brethren? Uh, if someone uh, says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? Well, we can get into that. We have got into that. And then he goes a little bit further and he says, If a brother or a sister is marked, uh, is naked and destitute of daily food, one of you say to them, uh, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but do not give them things which are needed for the body. What is it profit? And that's where we were a few weeks ago. But as we look a little bit further, uh, we find after all that, he's saying, uh, you say you have faith, uh, and with that, but you don't have works to show it. And uh, then what is it really profit? What is it profit if we say that, uh, let's say, for instance, let's just say, well, I'm a millionaire, but you don't have anything to show for it. Then are you really a millionaire? Or uh, I'm a genius in this area, but yet you don't even show it. How can you say that you're a genius in that area? Or whatever the course may be. Uh, the same thing goes in our Christian walk. Is if we say something, but yet we don't show something, we find here in this verse, as uh, Brother uh, James has said, that... Uh, it, Thus also, uh, also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now this deadness that we're talking about, when you look at uh, just a little bit closer as he looks there at this very first, he says, thus also faith by itself. Now in this faith that we're looking at, we need to understand that word is a word that we know. We, we've looked at it many a time. And that word is pistis, uh, P-I-S-T-I-S, and, and it means uh, it means to be persuaded. If you'll remember, as uh, uh, Paul is telling uh, one of the high rulers that's trying to decide whether or not he's going to throw him in prison or whether or not he's going to let him loose, uh, he tells him his story. He gives him the gospel day after day after day after day. And then the man says, I was almost persuaded. This is the exact same word. So as we look at that, what do we find? We find that if we also have faith by itself, if we are, are persuaded by itself, if it does not have works, then it is dead. So as we look there at this being persuaded, there are a lot of people out there, there are a lot of, I'm just going to call them evangelists out there, that can persuade a crowd. They can uh, rear up everybody. They can get them all to uh, a sense of need, a sense of, uh, won't, and then they uh, they feel persuaded. And but after the service is over, they never darken the door again, or nothing has been changed. They have no words. And if that is a faith that we have, then our faith is dead. It means this faith means to be convicted of something. Thus, also, if we only have conviction. And there is no work because of that conviction, then what kind of conviction is it really? 
That's what we find when we look here at James. James is not just a willy-nilly. He's not one of these that, that, that tippy-toe around, but he gets down to the matter just like his brother, just like his friend Paul. They get down to the matter, and here we find he's saying, what good is your conviction? What good is the convictions you have of life if you're not showing and doing the convictions that you have said that you have? This word pistos means a reliance on Christ. Now, when we look at our reliance on Christ, uh, we simply can uh, can say that you know that one song that uh, that I've quoted time and time again. I guarantee you've sung over and over again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And we say we have that hope. But if we really have that hope, if we really are relying on Christ, then why do we not show the works to go along with it? I can hear it now. Uh, somebody's thinking in their head, well, you just keep talking about works. You're talking about works. We don't, we don't live in a works-based society. And you're right. But if you look here, what James is saying, if you have faith, then you're going to have works to go with that faith. If you have faith and you do not have works, then your faith is vain. Paul says that if you have faith, you will have works. But if you, do, if you don't show those things, as, as we read, I was reading earlier today in, uh, in Galatians, and he says, uh, that, uh, that, that you are so easily bewitched, that, that you say you have this, but yet you're not showing it. Same thing going on here. We're looking at uh, two of the first four books of your New Testament dealing with the exact same thing, of people saying one thing but doing another. Does that sound familiar? This faith means that we have a consistency in our profession. You see, I could say all day long that I love my wife. But if I never show her my love, then what type of love is that? We can say all day long, and we can even sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. But if we never show our love for Jesus, what type of love is that really? And, and really, th this gets down to a, a belief in Christ. I said this a few weeks ago. Uh, I can't remember if it was here, if it was somewhere else. But, uh, but you know, we can believe in Christ... and still not get to where we think we should. Why? Because we can believe here and not here. There are too many people inside churches on Sunday mornings, even now, at, at the, the dilapidated, dilapidated uh, number of people that go to church on a, a, a regular basis, that, that they still they have a head knowledge of Christ, they know that he was a man. They know that he healed people. They know that he raised people from the dead. They know that he forgave sins. They know that he died on a cross. They know that he arose from the dead. But yet all they have is a head knowledge and not a heart knowledge. And if you have only a head knowledge, then that faith that you have is a dead faith. Because true faith will change us and make us have a desire To follow Christ and do the things of Christ. He says there, thus also, uh, thus also faith by itself. Now when we look at that by itself, that, that's very important. Because you should know the solas, right? By, by grace alone, by scripture alone, uh, by faith alone. If we have faith, then we will show it. He says there, if it does not have works. Now, 
Now you look at that, and what does it mean? If it uh, does, if it does not have words, that's echo, uh, eme, aragon. That, that's uh, what uh, he wrote down there. And as we look at that, we look at has. It's has not worked. Uh, and in this has, it means uh, that it's something that we hold on to. Our works are something that are tangible. Now, before we go any further, we got to really think back to something we, we preached about two years ago uh, when we were looking in Ephesians uh, when it says, By grace are you saved, not by works, lest any man could boast. What does that mean? If we only have works and we don't have grace and faith, then that also is vain. But here, this uh, has not works, we need to understand that means that we're holding on to the work that God has called us to. In other words, we've got to be faithful. And then you could ask the question, how faithful are you really to Christ? See, without that faithfulness, how can we say we have faith? We look at this word has, it means to be. That, that means if we have this faith, then we are to be doing the good works. It means that we possess these works that, that God has called us to. That you know, some people may think are crazy. Some people uh, may think that uh, that oh, they're just a good person. They're a good man. That they'll get to heaven just because they've been good. They've been morally good. But but we find that 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 just doing works by itself does not save you. It takes faith. But in that faith, then it, then it shows works. And as we look, not works. That, that word is. And that word means that we have no works. Now, I know you're probably looking in, in your mind and you're saying, well, I've, I've done this, I'm checking this, I'm checking that, I've got works. Well, then what are you trying to get to? What I'm trying to get to here is that did those works see you earning your way to heaven or are those works because you have the desire to do what God has called you to do? And then we get to the work. Works, that means that we labor. That means that sometimes it's going to be hard. By the way, Jesus never said it would be easy. Matter of fact, Jesus said it would get harder and harder and harder. Yeah, what do we do? We, we've got to be faithful and do the labor that God has called us to, that word the Aragon means to toll, to, to, to sweat it out, to do the work. And, and, you know, sometimes it may not be pleasant. Sometimes it may be harder than we would ever think. But we must do the work. We must be in action. This word is a present tense word. What does that mean? That means you don't get to stop doing good works. You don't get to stop doing work because you've done your time. Your time is done when God calls you home. And until that time comes, we are to continue to do the work of the servant, of the watchman. And as long as we continue to do those things, we are showing our faith even to the next generation. That's the reason that, that Paul would say uh, some roughly uh, 10 to 15 years later that, that let the older teach the younger. Why? Because as we continue to be faithful in our works, we can show the next generation what it takes to show and to do the faith in which we say we have. Now, with that, we need to look at a few little things. We've talked about it. We've touched on it just for a few minutes. We're really going to hit it hard now. And with this, we need to understand that while faith does not save, they do show and prove our salvation and sanctification. I'm going to take you over just for a few moments to Galatians. Uh, because uh, it's either Galatians, then James, or James, then Galatians. 
they're pretty close to one another as far as the dating. Uh, but in uh, Galatians chapter 2, looking at verse 16, there we find that the Word of God says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, that's great. So we're not justified by works. We've already said that, preacher. Keep going. There's only a comma there. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So what is he saying there? He's saying there that, that the works in which we do, these works in which we do are not simply by continuing in the old covenant, by continuing under the law. We do not rely on the Old Testament style of works. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, I can bring it down to, uh, we could look at uh, the sacrifices. Do we have to go out and uh, kill a bull every time we sin? Thank God, no. Do we have to go out and kill a, a sheep or a goat? No. Do we have to go kill uh, a pigeon? No. Do we have to go kill a turtle dove? No. Uh, you know, these, all these other things that we can look at and we could see as the Old Testament law dictated that we do. We don't have to do that because Christ Jesus was our sacrifice. But if we continue in doing the old instead of living in the new, then that old style, that old uh, way, that old work does not matter as it does to faith. But we find there with that, and that he goes on, and we need to understand that by these old style, but we are to be a Christian. Now, what, what are you talking about there, preacher? Well, let's look there at, at again. He says, if it does not have works. That word have right there, we find, what does that mean? That means that it is a process of being. We are to be doing the good works. So what does that mean? That means that it proves our salvation to a lost and dying world. By the way, part of that doing those good works is that we should be compelled to tell others about Jesus Christ. We should be compelled to bring them into the body. We should be compelled to see them saved. We should be compelled uh, to help them to grow as Christians, to, to disciple them and live in this discipleship kind of mode. And that's where we, as a children of God, should be. Because we have faith, but not by itself. We find there in that in Galatians uh, 6 through 4, that we do prove our faith in our works. So as you look at that in Galatians 6, this word prove our faith, that means the word prove there, it, it means to test. So we just got in talking about uh, somebody's got five finals they're going to be given. They're going to be grading those five finals. I've only got one. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but well, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be testing our students. We're going to be testing those that we've brought, that we've come alongside, that they can get what we have. And that's what happens when we prove our faith. We are testing that faith. Now, we can go back if you wanted to look in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we, we, we actually said that uh, uh, two Sundays ago when we had the Lord's Supper where it said that we must examine ourselves. Same word. And in that, as we prove our faith, let's discern within ourselves who do we do those things for. Do we do those things to pat ourselves on the back? Or do we do those things to glorify Jesus Christ? Sometimes we've got to scrutinize. Scrutinize, why did I do that? Now, I know that, that none of you have ever 
uh, done a sin and you didn't realize it till you'd done it, and then you looked at yourself or you said to yourself, why did I do that? Nobody's ever done that in here, have they? That is scrutinizing, that is proving your faith. We find in that also in Galatians uh, chapter 6. Might as well read it. I've already uh, said it a few times. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. Uh, he says there also, But let each one examine his own work, same word, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. What does that mean? That So in this proving, in this doing these works, it leads to us having joy in Christ. Leads to us having joy. Now here, here's the thing. We can be in the worst situation we've ever been in our lives, and if we are a child of God, we can find joy in Christ. This joy causes us to proclaim Jesus Christ. Not just in whisper, but in word. We proclaim him to a lost and dying world. Remember, remember the Great Commission. What did Jesus say? Go out and tell just your family. Go out and tell just the people you work with. Or go out and tell everybody about me. I believe the word is the everybody, all, A-L-L. You can't get out of that word. See, this joy that we have in proving our faith through the works in which we do will make us have a desire to proclaim it to a lost and dying world. It causes us to glorify Christ in everything that goes on. Everything we should always seek to glorify Christ. Christ. And in that, that joy as we proclaim, in that joy as we glorify Christ, we need to understand that one day we shall be glorified in Him as well. Without these works, our faith is dead. That's what you find there in James. He says there, if it does not have works, it is dead. What does that mean, dead? That word there is necros. Necros, that means dead. That means they have no breath in them. What is the most... most prized possession that a man or a woman has. Surely for the ladies, it's that big diamond ring. Right, ladies? No? Maybe it's their kids, right? No? It's their spouse. It's got, it's got to be your spouse. No. The most prized possession we have, the thing that we will spend all the money in the world for, is our breath. Go back and you remember in the garden, uh, or Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says there that, uh, that God formed man out of the clay of the, uh, the ground, and then he breathed the breath of life in him, and man became a living soul. If we are necros, if we're dead, we do not have that breath. I'm afraid in, in a lot of places in our lives and in our churches and uh, in our ministries and all these things, we are lacking the breath of God living through those things. This word dead means that they are lifeless. Destitute of life, without life. But it also means that are dead, it means they are without the power of God. That very power of God that quickens us, 
unto salvation. So, so what is he? What is what is James really saying here? He's saying there that uh, if we if we have faith by itself and we do not have the works to show it, then we're really not saved. We can say it all day long, but if we don't do it, we ain't no more saved than the hill uh, hill cat outside. It means that we've become inactive. So where are you tonight? I want you to prove or to examine yourselves tonight as you look and you simply ask the question. I know I have faith. But do my works show it? I know I have faith. I know believe. But have my works changed me? Do my works bring joy unto the Father and that joy living within me? Because if we don't have the works to go along with the faith, then Brother James says, we are dead. Let us pray. Dear Lord, most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, Father, I simply ask that you would prove us. Father, examine us right now and help us to examine ourselves right now. Lord, everybody in this room says that we have faith. But Father, help us to show those, that faith by our works. Lord, this place is where we are not showing those works of our salvation. Maybe we're hiding them. Maybe we're ashamed of them. Maybe we just don't even know how to prove, to show our works. Father, I ask that you would knock on the door of our hearts and that you would prove us. And Father, just simply, those places where, where our works don't match up, not only prove us, but stretch us. Stretch us to show that we are your children. For it's your name we ask and that we humbly pray. Amen.